Welcome to the Skate Sanctuary, the home of Roller Girl Gang. And my name is Mel. Thank you very much for being here. If you find this video useful, I would be very grateful if you press the like button and maybe even subscribe to our channel. So, today I want to talk about pads, protective gear. Maybe not the coolest topic there ever was, but nevertheless quite important. And it's definitely something that can raise your confidence in roller skating. If you are worried about falling, you will tend to hold your body a bit stiffer, but if you are more relaxed, you'll actually be able to bend your knees more easily and you're actually less likely to fall. So the irony of wearing protective gear to protect you from falling, although you're less likely to fall when you're wearing that protective gear. Okay, let's start with something that we tend to recommend to people who are starting out. <clears throat> we quite enjoy the Rekt pads. There are quite a few choices at this price point. This is around £30 for a full set of pads. And by full set of pads, I am talking about a pair of wrist guards, elbow pads and knee pads. Um, I will show you how to put them on in a minute, but we'll also do a little comparison between the type of protection these offer and some of the other styles of protective gear. I find that sets like this are not the most generously sized. I think they are maybe aimed at a younger market than you know someone in their mid-40s starting to learn roller skating for the first time so don't be too surprised if you feel that you need to size up to be comfortable most of them have got rough guidelines size guidelines um, on the listings and they're pretty accurate so just measure just above and just below your knee and and then you can go from there now I've actually got quite thick baggy denim trousers on today and if I'm trying to tuck all of this material in underneath the knee pad I will definitely need to size up so I would need to allow room for that as well and that's really worth bearing in mind what do you usually wear when you're roller skating because if you wear gym leggings or something like that you can probably get away with a smaller knee pad smaller pad if you're wearing something like I am today or you are a yak wearer and you enjoy a good good pair of dungarees then maybe you want to get a bigger size so that you've got the room knee pads go on most of them like this they've got a hard shell and that's the bit that actually protects your knee from the impact on the floor and it makes it more durable it means you will slide along the floor instead of gripping on the floor then on the inside there are various layers of foam and the quality and density of the foam is very variable and that is definitely something that you get what you pay for so if you pay a little bit more it will offer better protection and it will likely last you much, much longer. However, it depends on the type of skating you're doing, on how you feel as to the type of protection that you feel you need that's going to make you feel confident. So something like this, when you're not used to wearing any knee protection at all, should help you feel more confident. You can get something that is even like, I would say slimmer offers much even less protection than this um i would say really that you're looking at kind of kids size protection it will offer something but it's basically going to just stop you sticking to the floor so something like this will offer some cushioning as well but you will need to practice falling onto it so that you know how it feels and that you trust it because until you trust your pads you will actually still feel uncomfortable and you won't relax and so you'll just keep falling onto them but that is covered in another video which if I can do this and I can put an image there and link it there later I'll be really excited about okay 
So, knee pad. This style of knee pad has got what we call a sleeve. So there is a sleeve that goes all the way through and you can put your leg all the way through this, but you need to do this before you put your roller skates on because otherwise you'll have spent ages lacing them up and then go, oh wait, that didn't happen. Fortunately, the manufacturers of this knee pad thought about that and you can put this one just directly over your clothing and just strap it closed. Okay, so it'll go around through the elastic -y bit and then you'll be able to poke it back on. You want to make sure that it feels secure and it's not slipping. Okay, and that, that feels okay. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see that I've put it this way up. So the way that I remember it is the writing looks like it's the correct way up for someone looking at you. That was helpful for me. Okay, so this one is actually a size large. And because, I, as I say, I'm wearing baggier trousers today, that would be my choice. But I reckon I could squeeze my leg into a medium. The elastic is only ever going to stretch and get bigger. It's not ever going to shrink back to get smaller. But if you overstretch it in the first place, it will probably dig in and be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so it's a comfort thing and very individual. Not here to tell you what's right or not. My suggestion is with this type of pack where you buy them as a pack and you can only choose the overall size we are not the same size our knees elbows and hands don't tend to be the same size you can get people with really long fingers like quite big palm but very slim knees and the opposite is true for most people we tend to suggest that if the knee pad fits the rest of it will be fine Okay, so let's get the wrist guard out. Some people want to try all the pads on and really there isn't any need. Just if you measure them, get the knee pads right and don't stress about the rest. Wrist guards go on like this. If you have a look in the thing on the tag, it will tell you left and right but sometimes if you're somewhere and you're borrowing equipment, it might not tell you left and right. So, this one is what we call a dual splint wrist guard. There are two hard bits in it. One that goes on your palm and one that goes down the back of your hand. And it goes there to try and keep your hand straight because there are lots of teeny tiny bones in your wrist and you don't want to fall like this. So this position is not a good one because it's going to put impact through the heel of your hand into the wrist and probably just cause those little bones to shatter. And then it will also, if you're really unlucky and you've gone down with a force like that, you'll have a locked out elbow. So you can have little fractured bones in your elbow, even though your elbow might not touch the floor. And it can also send that shockwave right up to your shoulder and your neck. So this position not a great one to fall in. Very difficult to avoid when you're newer because you tend to do this when you sit down, but as much as possible, try and fall with a flat hand like this. And a double splint wrist guard will help you because even in uh, when you're scared and falling, you'll forget and your body will try and do this position. But can you see how that's preventing me? So I can pull this quite tight if I want to but I can I can feel I've actually got quite a lot of space still in here and by how I've fastened up the velcro uh, if I wanted to and it's winter and I could skate outside I mean winter and outside but if I wanted to I actually could put a glove on underneath so I've got room to allow me to do that in the winter you, know, you can see this pump uh, bump on the palm and that is to prevent your fingers from touching the floor okay we have seen plenty of people who don't know how to put wrist guards on you'll try and put them on this way just not sure how they go 
thumb goes through the thumb hole and then usually they wrap round. Sometimes you need to put your hand through, like through a sleeve, they might not completely separate. And it just needs to be comfortable. So I'm actually just gonna loosen that one a little bit. If you shake them and they don't come off, then they're on safely, okay? So they're not coming off for me. I feel they're okay. And again, if you're worried, you can tap your hands on the floor a little bit so that they make a noise. Okay, I'm not gonna do it too much with these because they are brand new. Um, so you can tap them on the floor and just, you get an understanding of what the impact may feel like if you do fall in an uncontrolled way and that can help you feel more confident. So that's my wrist guards on. Um, if you were wearing elbow pads, you would put them on before the wrist guards, put them on before. So elbows, knees and wrists tends to be enough protection and spending around 30 pounds is is gonna get you a pretty okay starter set. You'll probably wear them until they've worn out. But it does also offer lighter protection if you feel confident anyway, but you just want something that's not too bulky. So it's a pretty good price for the protection that it offers. And this particular pad set, the reason that we chose the wrecked ones was we did quite a bit of testing. We wanted to make sure that we could offer inclusive sizing where possible. Um, some brands just, their size large is not very large, but we'll get to that in a moment. And also I quite like the fact that they come in this little net bag. And as long as you fasten from the bottom, you've kind of got a little storage bag to keep them in. That will keep them aired out because what you definitely want to do in terms of your maintenance is make sure they dry properly before you store them away. So please do not put them straight into a sealed bag somewhere and don't ever air them out. They really, really, really need to like dr completely dry out. So wrecked pads, not a bad choice. They come in a few different colors as well. Uh, the next ones we're going to look at is the Moxie pad set because these are also really popular but you can probably see straight away the profile of them is much thicker. So these offer a lot more protection and that's because Moxie did a collaboration with 187 Killer Pads who are a really well known, very trusted brand and the minute you touch them you can feel the difference in the quality of the materials. And I, everything about them is just, it feels smoother, it feels a bit nicer. I mean, plastic does feel like plastic, but the nylon used for making these feels better. And I know from having tested them myself, I've actually got the, the teal blue, the blue ones. So the, this Velcro doesn't pull on this as much as it does on the rect pads. So if you accidentally misalign where the moxie pads go it's not going to completely rip this up it does feel very strange on your leg because unless you've been used to wearing knee pads which i'm sure you're not then it will feel a bit odd oh, these match extremely well so the other thing that we are not that keen about with moxie pads is the sizing because it's a it's very general so we've got small medium but then the next size up is LXL. There is no M slash L, which a lot of people would have chosen. Um, so yeah, it's just a bit of a best fit. But you can see between the LXL and the small medium, the size, it's the width of the knee that is gonna get, probably determine your size. So again, measure your body, or if you're coming to visit us, you can just try them on. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I put these ones on. The fastening is a bit more fiddly. So I'm just going to fasten this off at the back so I can show you what I mean. Um, the other thing that we did like about the Moxie pads is they go to junior sizes and they do offer a, a double XL, which they sometimes call XT. And sometimes they call it, oh, fling it on the floor. And sometimes they call it an XXL, but it's the same thing. So 
This is made in very much the same way. It does tell you here the size and it tells you which side of leg to put it on. <clears throat> so this one tells me it's the right. I'm gonna put it on here and the elastic loops around the outside, pull it in and over the knee. Again, for much more secure fastening, I would put my whole leg through, okay? The back goes, this is a double clip, it goes through the, the back first and then out through the front one and then you can pull it tight. What I wanted to show you was the shape of this, so it's shaped to your knee. And do you remember, we were putting the writing at the top so that someone looking at you knows which way, um, they should see it the right way up. So I'm gonna put that one over there and then through the middle and out through the front. Definitely, when you're putting all your pads on, give yourself plenty of time. This is not a thing to rush. <laughs> um, it can take 15, 20 minutes. So now, if I pull this tab, it will be, it's a one-way fastening. To release, I'm just gonna lift the tab, a bit like a seatbelt. So pull it to tighten and then lift to release. However, if I stand up, it's now slightly digging into my shin, which is a bit uncomfortable. So if I stand up normally, stand up straight, it's digging in a little bit, which isn't that, that nice a feeling. If I bend my knees, it actually stops that completely. It alleviates that pressure on my shin. So these pads, the 187 Killer Pads, will almost subconsciously remind you to keep your knees soft and a little bit bent because it won't have that pressure, it won't, it's not a pain, but it's like, it's uncomfortable. So it won't hurt you if you keep your knees bent and that will help you get into that position sooner. Also, the padding, the actual stuff that's inside these is significantly better quality than the wrecked pads. Um, so if you are particularly worried when you're starting your skating or perhaps you've got an injury, an existing injury and you need to protect yourself, maybe you know you've got an issue with your knees and you need to invest in something a bit better, these are much better quality and you can feel it on the inside. They really are, they really are decent. So would recommend the rest of the pads are very, very similar to the wrecked ones uh, in terms of the wrist guards are that dual splint design. And yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know about those two choices. So we only offer those two choices because we felt like it's enough. And if you want something different, that's absolutely fine. We don't necessarily sell it. The one that I did want to share with you are these. These are covert pads. So these ones are made by Moxie and they did another collaboration with this protection company, but this is triple eight. So let's put you on top of the wheels. And then this is triple eight's regular one, which is just black. They do these in knees and elbows. They do not do a wrist version of these and they're available separately. Like really, they're quite expensive for what they are, which is thick elastic neoprene stuff is how it feels with some padding on the front. Now, you can hear that, that is a soft front. It is not a hard shell like this one or the wrecked ones, which means, yes, you have a lot more flexibility in the pad, However, it's not gonna offer the same protection when you fall. It will offer some, you know, some is better than none, and it is cushiony, but if you are doing things that involve a lot of impact, this is probably not the pad for you. I would say this is for people who are a bit more confident with their skating, maybe the falling is more incidental, and they want something as a just in case. That's how I would view this pad. The other thing that I feel is that they are not particularly generously sized. This one is large. I took this one out. So this knee pad, oh no, wait, huh, it's an elbow. That's not good, is it? 
large elbow pad. This one is a knee. So this is a medium knee. And they, annoyingly, they only go small, medium, large. So I feel that they have got some work there to make their sizing more inclusive. Um, but it's tight. I have the large and it feels small. So this is medium. I'm pushing quite hard on my hands. All right, it's not, it doesn't feel good. It feels tight, but it will feel, um, if you've ever worn compression socks or something like that, feels a bit of a, like giving you a bit of a squeeze. And then the elbow, so most people will find that their leg ones are bigger than the arm one. So this is a large elbow and that's too big for me. I mean, a <laughs> bit of a weakling maybe, but it's doing something because it's it feels like I'm a bit restricted, but at the same time, I don't know if you know you fall on your elbows, then maybe then you'll feel comforted by that or maybe that's something that you would prefer instead of this type of elbow pad with a hard shell but you might still want your other pads um as i say it's just something that is going to help you feel a bit more confident i do like these when i've been skating outside and having like shorts on so these do feel more comfortable like directly on the skin compared to some of the other pads but I have seen people get something like skater socks and chop the toe off so when they're done and then just use them as kind of a sleeve inside just as like a liner so it's not directly next to your skin so that's something else you could think about uh, so yeah the covert pads incidental pad we do also have bum savers which honestly are really great if you're struggling with confidence then you might want to invest in a pair of these um, they are padded so we have the ones that are the roller derby under short ones you can get a version that is longer and offers more hip protection but these so they come small medium large and extra large they have got removable um, cushions on the inside and they just kind of stretch out but you can see that they've got hip and most importantly tailbone padding so that when you are, if you're falling, um, these were designed for roller derby players to take hits or give hits on the hips. Yeah, receive or take blocks. But they are designed to be like quite, quite, quite slim and worn underneath regular clothing. So. You, they're quite well hidden because of their, their shorter length, but might you might feel that they're a good investment. And again, very dependent on you and how you feel. I didn't have a pair, but certainly when I fell and hurt my tailbone, I really wished I did. Uh, yeah, so it might be something to think about, as I say. Let me put those back there. So we've got these in stock at the moment. And they're pretty decent. The last ones I want to chat about are, so these are the roller derby, the pro, the pro knee, and you can see how thick these are. Now these pads and the S1 Gen 4, um, these are 90 pounds at the moment, at the time of filming. And that is a very expensive pad. And you might be thinking, do I need to spend that much? Well, if you want to really care for your body, if you're doing something that is falling a lot, then yes, I would really strongly recommend that this is something that you do need because you want to be able to walk and not be in a lot of pain in the rest of your life. So £90 now means no knee replacements later or a less serious injury and less metal in your body. Um, because even through pads, you're not invincible. It does depend on where you are and how you're using them. So if you are really flinging yourself around, then you do need to invest in the protection for your body because these are replaceable. This is harder to replace. I would actually argue that this S1 pad is I prefer it to this one and I had a visit from a friend last year actually 
And when she came over, I had a knee injury and she said, oh, Mel, like, shall we go to the skate park? And I said, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm quite worried because I've got an existing knee injury. I really fell hard onto concrete outside. I basically kicked my own feet, kicked my wheels out from under me and I flew across the pavement. Um, no knee pads, no wrist guards, no nothing. And the first thing to hit the floor was my knee. And it did swell up and it was swollen for probably a month. I did not go and get it looked at because, yeah, that's how it is. But it exacerbated an old knee injury that I did when I was playing roller derby and I did have knee pads like that where I was on a slippery floor, um, was falling anyway, standard roller derby, and I f fell over, but I was going so fast that I slid along the sports hall floor and hit a wall, like hard. Um, hard enough that there was one, like a fake window and it shocked the people on the other side. So it was pretty hard. And then later on, I remember I was um, I was teaching my year one class. I was preparing and knelt on the floor, and I thought, I mean, this was some weeks later. I was thinking, what is what? What have I knelt on? Oh, there's something like sharp on the floor, and only maybe three or four times that happened. And I thought, it's nothing on the floor. The cleaners haven't missed anything. It's something in my knee. So that was old old. It's fine now, my knees click a bit, but I'm not in pain, so you know, I haven't ever got it sorted out. But having done, oh, let's bring you back. Having, having had quite a nasty fall outside in 2022, I decided actually I was gonna take a bit more care of over my body. So last year, I did get, I did invest in a pair of S1 knee pads. And there is something different about these and the technology that they've used. I mean, obviously I don't know what it is. Could have read about it, but I haven't. For one, the, the end is easier because it's not been double stitched over. It's, it's designed to be threaded back through in and out much more easily. The other thing I like is this butterfly back. So instead of it being a sock that you have to slide your leg in and out of, it means that if you change your mind at any point, you can take them on and off, which without having to take your skates on and off. So <clears throat> all knee pads are pretty much the same. It's just how you feel when you fall. So I'm just gonna pull it on. I would say this is not quite my size. Um, but the elastic, everything again, it just feels really, really durable and solid and I, I did have to practice throwing myself around a little bit because uh, although I've been roller skating for quite a while, I've also not fallen hard and in an uncontrolled way for quite a while. So I had to get myself back used to falling and falling and falling and that was tricky. Uh, so I did have to take these and I threw myself on the floor a little bit and then I tried throwing myself on the bad knee first, which is the right one, um, over the left knee first and I was actually very, very pleasantly surprised. So I'm very happy to recommend the S1 Gen 4 knee pads as being a really solid choice. So we happily did some ramps and I fell a lot and it was completely fine. So that is my rundown on some of the protective gear that we stock in the shop at Roller Girl Gang. Um, we'll also hasten to add that this is not this is not all protective gear that is available. There is lots more that is available. There is a very small amount of stuff. There's a very small amount of stuff that we've actually tried and tested and we can hand on heart say, I love this because it takes me a really long time to get used to things and I'm not happy to recommend things that I haven't tried. Or someone very, very close to me has tried and like wholeheartedly recommended. So that is where we are with all of our gear. 
If you found this video useful in any way, then I would love you to subscribe to our channel. If you've got any other views, then please drop things in the comment below. What else would you find useful to help you feel more confident in your roller skate journey? Yeah, I hope that helps. Thank you very much for joining me at the Skate Sanctuary. Bye bye.